Hey guys, welcome to my part 3 of Bombs and Explosives Guide for HBM Small. Now, in the first part of the video, we covered how to use the conventional landmines and explosives in the bomb. And in the second part of the video, we covered how to use the nuclear and the thermonuclear bombs in HBM Small. So, in the third part of this video, we are gonna take a look on all the Shirbidium bombs, the Balefire bombs, and finally, the anti mass type explosion bombs. So, without any further ado, my guys, let's get straight in this video. So we are gonna start this video with a magic trick and the magic trick is that we are gonna make this entire village disappear with the first Shirbidium type bomb which is the Fledger. Now the thing that you have to remember with all the Shirbidium type bombs is the things that you need to arm this bomb they will make you blind temporarily if you have not put on some sort of high armor protection. So yeah. Now in order to arm this Fledger, place down two pulse igniters on the ends like this and then place three Shirbidium propellants here. And once you place them, you need to place six Uranium-235 Fledger charges. Now the interesting thing about Shirbidium bombs is that they produce a Fock Wagner field which actually eliminates everything in its way. It doesn't take in account what is the blast resistance of the block. So now that my Fledger is armed, I am gonna take a detonator and set it on the Fledger. And you will see what I mean when I say that it doesn't take block resistance into account. So 3, 2, 1. And bam. Now as you can see, we have a perfect hemisphere in the ground like this. So everything inside the hemisphere is totally gone for it. So this is what I mean when this bomb doesn't take into account any sort of blast resistor whatsoever. Now, in order to demonstrate this effect more effectively, what I'm gonna show you guys is, you see this building in front of us right here. It is made of concrete bricks and broken concrete bricks. Now, if I take a simple mini nuke, which is a nuclear bomb in a sense, and I am gonna take a high yield mini nuke for maximum impact. And if I fire this mini nuke, it will have little to no effect on this building. Even though the this is a high yield mini nuke, the concrete can resist it pretty easily in this part. So there, as you can see, the building is still intact, as concrete in this mod has very high blast resistance. Now let's see what happens when we instead place down a Fledger, which is a Shirbidium type bomb, and explode it. So now I have completely armed this Fledger bomb, and I'm gonna set my detonator, and in 3, 2, and 1. So as you can see, the building has disappeared entirely. So this is the beauty of Shirbidium bombs. They don't spare anyone or anything. They just completely annihilate the area in a perfectly symmetrical way. Now the second bomb that we are going to test is the big brother of Fledger, which is the prototype. Now the prototype is a huge bomb. It has an explosive radius of 150 blocks and it is very, very destructive. So be careful while using it. So in order to arm the prototype, you need to place down four uranium quad rods on the very end like this. And then what you need to do is place four lead quad rods uh, after the uranium rods. So here we go. And in the center, place down neptunium quad rods. Now in these four remaining slots, what we are going to place is shirbidium trisulfide cells. So let me get them real quick and when you have them in your inventory, you are going to be blinded as with all the other Shirbidium materials. So place down Shirbidium trisulfide cells, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and there. Now our prototype is completely up. So now there is a material called or there is an item called the igniter which is said to use on the prototype but don't use it. Otherwise the prototype will explode directly in your face. Now you don't want such a powerful bomb exploding in your face. Even Mr. Villager right here, he says that that is not a very good idea. So instead, we are gonna take a detonator and then we are gonna set this detonator on the prototype and then we are gonna make it go boom. So now that the position is set, three, two, and one. Let's go. Now, as you can see, the Fork Wagner field produced by the prototype is pretty massive. And yeah, the explosive radius of this bomb 
is 150 blocks so it has a 300 block diameter in total now what i'm gonna do is basically turn up my render distance a little bit so that we can see the full size of the crater and here we go now as you can see this is the damage caused by the prototype pretty insane right but it is also pretty beautiful considering how symmetric this hemisphere or the shape that it has produced is. So now that we have checked out two of the most powerful Shirbidium bombs, the third bomb that we are gonna check won't deal a lot of damage, but it will kill every living entity within its vicinity. So this bomb is called the Blue Rings or also the Solonium bomb. And in order to arm the Solonium bomb, place down four Solonium pulse igniters like this, and then place down four Solonium uh, compression charges and after placing them finally what you need to do is place down the semi-stable solonium core so let me get that real quick here we go semi-stable solonium core and then place that core in the middle now as i said before this won't this bomb won't deal any block damage but it will kill every living entity within its range and it has a pretty big range so, 3, 2, and 1. So, as you can see, the Fog Wagner field was pretty big, and every living entity, villagers, wood, grass, anything that was alive, has now been consumed by the blue winds. But stones, cobwebs, everything that was not alive, it remains. So, if this is a pretty good bomb if you just want to damage the mobs or basically players inside an area and leave the infrastructure intact so now that we have checked the shirbidium type bombs it is time to check out the balefire type bombs and the first balefire type bomb we are going to check out today is the dirt now dirt is a failed bomb that yeah as the name suggests it failed to explode when it fell down so it is buried half in the ground like this now you can right click with the detonator in order to set the location and then again right click in order to make the mail fire or the dirt bomb go boom so as you can see the damage it deals is not a lot but what is particularly annoying about bell fire type bombs is that it will spawn bell fire everywhere now bell fire is particularly annoying as it spreads really fast and if you stand in it or basically if you are damaged by bell fire you are gonna get this contaminated status on you also another thing is that it is very difficult to put out bell fire so one of the ways that you can put out bell fire is by using a foam type fire extinguisher so if i take a foam type fire extinguisher and load it up real quick yeah so as you can see the foam type fire extinguisher extinguishes this type of fire pretty easily but you have to be very careful with it as this fire spreads really quickly and it will produce some lag in your world. Now the second big bomb is the bale fire bomb and this is how it looks like. Pretty dangerous but pretty cool. Now in order to arm the bale fire bomb you only need two things. The first is the bale fire egg and second is the spark battery. So first let me get the bale fire egg and make sure that you are wearing some sort of protection because this egg is pretty pyrophobic it will burn you so place the egg here and then place the spark battery and with the spark battery placed the bomb is now up you can also set the timer which is pretty cool here i'm just gonna set it to 30 seconds and then i'm gonna arm the bomb now the countdown has begun and the bomb will explode in 30 seconds as you can see the timer can also be seen outside of the bomb which is a pretty cool feature in my opinion and then let us see what happens after 30 seconds pass looks like the bomb has got the villagers pretty excited three two one is massive so as you guys can see the explosion caused by the pale fire bomb 
is pretty massive compared to the other bombs that we checked down. It can only be compared with the prototype. And yeah, it has spawned Balefire in a pretty big area. So I'm just gonna skip the part where the laptop froze again. And then here you can see the amount of damage the Balefire bomb does. So be careful while using it. Now the third Balefire type bomb is called the Balefire Egg Launcher. And in order to obtain this, you are gonna need the Black Book, which is pretty difficult to obtain. So yeah. Now the Balefire Egg Launcher is kinda like an M42 nuclear catapult, but it is a Balefire variant. So it fires Balefire shells like this, and there, a small nuclear explosion with Balefire spawning everywhere. So you can use it exactly like the M42 catapult. And here we go again. So yeah, this is the Balefire Egg Launcher, which can be used for Euphemium production. Now the final thing that we are going to check is the Rick Star Blaster Energy Cell, which is produced like this. Now the specialty of this cell is, if you leave it on the ground for too long, it will explode. And it also ignores any sort of resistance, blast resistance whatsoever. So if you love your base, please don't drop this. So here, I'm gonna drop this in this village as, yeah, I don't love this village. So now, I'm gonna speed this video by 5 times as it takes 50 seconds to explode. She's a warning. Boom. So not the prettiest explosion, but the greater it is gonna leave behind, yeah, that is pretty good. Cool. Is definitely a side to look at. Once again, a pretty symmetrical crater and ignores any form of blast resistance whatsoever. So it will destroy everything, literally everything within its range. So once again, use this bomb very, very carefully. So that was all I had for this video guys. I hope you guys liked it and all the bombs that I covered in this video. Now if you guys do have any suggestion for me, please let me know in the comment section down below. So peace out my guys, stay safe.